And welcome back to Out of the Bag. This is Sean Maguire live on People's Internet Radio. That's www.peoplesinternetradio.com where we are seeking solutions. And I have some fantastic news that um, I have on the line. Chris Bivy, are you with me? Hello, Sean. All right. Oh, fantastic to hear your voice, my friend. Um, what a horrible situation uh from 2 a.m. this morning. Chris, will you tell us all Before about it? Before that, mate. Before that, it's about uh, uh, quarter past, quarter past one, 20 past one, something like that. Wow, that's, uh, that's crazy. Knock on the door, and four coppers. It wasn't six, I don't know where tips came from. But it was four coppers. Um, and they asked us to come in. I said, you got one. And he said, no. So they arrested me. And entered under pace. And said, they're going to um, do um, a search. So... Uh, under section section thirty, hang on, just get a moment. Section thirty-two. Now they were very aggressive, um, and and at first they wouldn't let me see what section thirty-two was. Right. Uh, but but when I insisted, they uh, they showed me, and they have no power of search under section thirty-two, and unless it's an an indictable crime, which harassment isn't. Right. So um, they didn't know the law themselves, which is against the law. Um, they went away and made a phone call and um, said, yes, they are allowed to do it, which they're not. And I said, I've got the paperwork here. Uh, I'll put in a complaint anyway. Um, that, that's got to be followed up. But um, they, they said, you can do it two ways. We can take you down the station and, and search the place uh, while you're not here, or we can search the place while you're here. So... I had no choice really, Sean. That's what it's come to me these days. Chris, did, did, you, did you open the door to them or did they kick it in? No, no, no. I, I, I opened the door, ah. sort of stepped outside and they said, you know, can we come in? I said, no. Right. So he said, well, we, we'll arrest you. And um, they, they cautioned me and that. And then they came in and said they, they're going to search. I say, search the place under Section 32 of PACE, mm-hmm. um, um, which I predicted too strongly. I say, but they were very aggressive um, my daughter was very upset, and um, my young grandson was in uh, his car at the time. I mean, it's a stupid time to come around anyway, Sean, isn't it? Oh, my God. I mean, they, they just wanted to, you know, they, that's how they do it, you know. That's that's what they want. They want you to be asleep in your bed or uh, an easy job for them. Yeah, well, and like I say, um, I, I've got a, a Already complained. Um, uh, I've now got to go to the uh, Independent Police Complaint Commission, but um, <laughs> how we get on, I don't know, mate. <laughs> so, ha- did they charge you with anything? They haven't, I haven't been charged with anything yet, no. Uh, I'm on bail uh, till September the 5th, I think. But, uh, no. Uh, I was arrested for harassment. Um, <clears throat> So, um, so at least okay. the inf- so at least the information going out that you were arrested for harassment is true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although when it, when it came to the questioning, there was um, sort of going all, all over the place. But they, they were CID. The uh, the delay was they didn't know whether uh, to have the Greater Manchester Police do the interview or um, Essex Police. In the end, Essex Police did it. But they, they was just um, delaying me. You know, they kept me. Nine as long as possible, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let me have a fake show. What's it all about? Do you know? Look, let's just. There's a lot of listeners who might not have even heard of you, Chris. Okay, Um, Mm -hmm. we have people all over the world listening into this show. As lucky as we are, Um, let me say something, and and this isn't to butter you up or to you know boost anyone's uh, ego or anything, but. Chris has got a website that everybody should check out. I think you need to have a, <laughs> a certain temperament. There's a bit of swearing in it, and uh, be it's an adult uh, site talking about well, adult swearing themes. Swearing never hurt anyone, Sean. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, it's a bit of honesty there. I, I, I feckin' love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me tell you, this man has balls of steel. Okay. Uh, he came out of the the woodwork, if you like, absolutely balls out, absolutely fighting. I mean. Um, but one thing I really want to say that comes across very, very much all the way through his exposing of, of, of disgusting and despicable acts and lies and cheating and paedophile rings and, uh, you know, ma- mainstream media bullshit. This guy still is an honorable and uh, humble man. And, uh, Chris, you're so, so welcome to Out of the Bag. Thank you. 
Thank you. One, one last one special, and I don't know um, uh, about balls of steel, but um, yeah, you got him. You got him. I'm angry, mate. I'm angry. <laughs> nah, you got him. And uh, you know, if you put Bill Maloney and you together in the same room, I don't know. You know, I'm fucking hell. Who, who do we listen to? <laughs> yeah, I was speaking to Bill just last week. So it was, it was <laughs> nice, nice fella. Nice fella. Absolutely, absolutely. And and those that have, you know, um, I I I'm I'm over in Ireland, so I don't even look look at your stuff. Do you know? Uh, haven't met you. Um, I know people who do know you. Don't look at my stuff, Sean. How do you mean you don't look at my no, stuff? That's all I do is look at your stuff. I oh, haven't, right, the, I haven't the opportunity to, to meet you personally. <laughs> <laughs> and that's quite rare for some of my guests as well. I usually meet my guests and uh, know them very well. Um, Chris, I don't know where to start. Um, do we talk about today's episodes? I mean, how, how's your daughter, Stacey, your daughter? And um, the, were there other Well, people? obviously, she's been very upset, Sean. I mean, she's only uh, 18 herself, you know, and um, and not used to having four policemen invade the uh, space at half past one in the morning, you know? No. Uh, I'd say they was very aggressive. They was aggressive to her as well. Really? Um, absolutely disgusting. Uh, one, one of them was about four foot ten. <laughs> you know, and, and, and uh, you know what they like when they're with them, mate. They're, they're just bully boys, Sean. I say uh, they, they was very, very rude. Uh, they they did a le- an illegal search, and I'm not going to let them get away with them. No, absolutely. And and the support you have got, Chris, is amazing because I'm a... absolutely fantastic, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Yeah. I haven't even finished reading all the comics yet. I didn't get until nearly half past eight. No, so, uh, well, I'm on, uh, I'm absolutely amazed that you're here, and uh, you know, any time you want to bow out, just just say so, man. You know, you've got enough on your plate than coming on a bloody radio show. <laughs> well, it's an easy way to let everyone know I'm all right, Sean, isn't it? It is, it is, and it's a platform to let people know that these paid thugs, because that's what they are. There's they a... are indeed. I, I say that you know nothing but rudeness. Um, they try to intimidate me, failed miserably. Um, uh, I say, but when you're left with a choice of Either being kited off down the station um, and then searching your home, or, or um, being in the home while they're searching it, then there's only one choice, really, isn't there? But mm-hmm. I say there's no doubt that the search was illegal. Uh, Section 32 and the boxes ticked here. I've got the paperwork in front of me. Um, they're, they're allowed to search me, which I had no objections to, but they're not allowed to search any property unless uh, the offence is, is, is an indictable offence, which harassment isn't. Uh, okay, uh, explain the harassment situation. Who are they saying uh, you harassed? Uh, because of the bail conditions, sure, and I can't, I can't talk too much about it, um, you know, but um, uh, basically they're saying that uh, I'm harassing the rigbies, which is total, total bollocks. Okay. I've written, I've written uh, over 100,000 words on the Woolwich hoax, and maybe 15,000 of them deal with the rigbies, so how that can be harassment, uh, I've got no idea, mate. No, absolutely. Uh, it's on my website anyway, to harass them, don't you have to go and um, <laughs> follow them about and, 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 and make a nuisance of yourself? Yeah, you didn't stalk them or anything, or give them hassle in their, in their local my, pub. No, I say that there, there's nothing in there that's not in the public domain. Okay. Well, look, so many people love you and so many people are, are, are offering, uh, you know, words of wisdom and words of comfort, etc. And, uh, Chug in the chat room is saying, now, you know, we have a live chat room here, Chris, so they're, they're able to give comments and ask you questions and all the rest of it. So, uh, obviously I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pass them on to you. But Chug says, mm-hmm. ask Chris if he knows Dave Eden. Now I've met Dave over in England, actually. I do know, him. yeah, I do know him, yes. Okay, from the community press group and he's a good yeah. man to help with complaints yeah. about police. So maybe that's a port of call, if not one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I say it's, it's, um, um, not, not having been in too long and, and, and still catching up with everything, Sean, uh, I haven't decided exactly um, what to do yet, you know. As I say I haven't even been finished reading all the messages and whatnot. Yeah, OK. So, no, fantastic support, mate. Uh, really, really took me by. So, I mean, I, I knew I have a large following, obviously. Um, but but um, the, the, the support has just been fantastic, mate. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. If you know, if I had that much support, I'd be very emotional at the moment. So I I understand where you're sitting and where you you know where you are. So uh, yeah, Chris, are we allowed to talk about the uh, the hoax, the the, the Woolwich hoax? Uh, well, he said I'm not allowed. According to the bail condition, let me have a look. 
according to my bail conditions. Um, um, no contact with any member of the Rigby family. Well, I never did. No. Uh, no, no, never did. Not to publish any communication via any website or through any social media with regards to Lee Rigby or his family. Hmm. Uh, I don't know whether that means I can talk about them or not. Um, the Woolwich Hope that I can certainly talk about without um, uh, talking about Lee Rigby. Absolutely, uh, because it could have been any uh, hero, they called him. It could be any uh, member of the military that they wanted to get rid of in this hoax, couldn't it? Yeah, um, and, and there's no doubt that it was a hoax, Sean. You've only got to look at the um, the video evidence. Um, and actually, talking about Dave Eden, when I spoke to Dave Eden, uh, he was last... I can't remember exactly where he was. It must be about six months ago uh, when I spoke to him. Um, he wanted to um, film it because I was talking to him about a court case and, uh, uh, you know, putting forward various things like, uh, uh, you know, witness statements being read out, uh, which are obviously false and whatnot. Uh, Would it be allowed to go ahead in, in a proper court? Because uh, I don't know if you know or not, Dave uh, used to collect evidence for... Um, uh, court cases when he was with the police. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, he said definitely not. And uh, he was quite interested in filming it, which would involve me um, going into a police station and, and um, putting forward my evidence, you know. Right, OK. But, I mean, uh, the, the, the two robots that I was talking to today from the CID, um, they, 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 they totally, totally uh, believe it was a real event and, and was having... Nothing of it, you know. It got quite heated actually at one stage. <laughs> well, they probably still believe nine eleven was. Uh... They do. They're, they're, they're just dumb as dumb as they come, mate. Dumb as they come, you know. You, you, you just you, you, you can see that the eyes go blank and, and it's just um, robotic repeating. Do you know? Absolutely. Yeah, not, I... not not in, not interested in solving the crime. Just yeah. uh, perpetrating the myth. I, I'm being asked who made the complaint. Well, this is, I wasn't actually told. Um, you weren't told? No, because I, I did say, uh, you know, uh, I'm not harassing anybody, but if anything I've said is untrue, uh, people are willing, uh, you know, uh, are quite entitled to um, sue me for libel, you know? Mm. Yet no one has, Dave. Uh, Sean, no one has, you know? Yeah. So you got to ask yourself, why haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, surely you would have heard bits and bobs and been told to shut up uh, earlier on before a fucking arrest takes place. Well, like, like, like I said, mate, it's, it's not me who, who um, went quiet. Um, I, I've invited everybody um, involved in the Oaks, Amy West. I'm allowed to talk about Amy West. Um, or don't say I can't talk about Amy West anyway. You know, um, they're, 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 they're quite welcome to get in touch with me. Um, but, but they haven't. Their silence speaks volumes. <laughs> uh, obviously, they have the full attention of anyone, uh, of everybody anyway, do you know, so there's no, um, saying that, well, they didn't know they could get told or whatever, or I'm worth getting in touch with. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Because that, that, that simply isn't true. So, their, their, their silence speaks volumes, really, mate. It does, uh, it does. Listen, I've been arrested myself a few times and, uh, you know, did they do the old handcuffs too tight stuff? They and... didn't, no, no, they didn't, didn't even handcuff me, mate. They, didn't, they, they was a bit sneaky, though. They, they parked around the corner uh-huh. um, in, in case we looked out the window. Um, so, so we wouldn't be able to see the cars. There's two cars. And, and, and I say they, they've, they've taken my computers quite illegally. Oh. Um, so that's theft? It is theft, yeah. Uh, and I say um, Section 32, which now they're trying to say... Uh, Oh, it's Section 19, but I say I have the, uh, the authority to search here, and, and the Section 32 boxes is, is ticked. Um, and, and I say they didn't want to show me it at first. They're not very clever, uh, are they? They're not, sorry, mate? They're not very clever, are they? No, uh, but when, when I did finally, <laughs> when, when, when he, he half showed me it, um, straight away I, I cottoned onto it, you know, that uh, under Section 32, they're allowed to search me, but not any premises unless it's in it. Any valuable um, uh, crime, which I say harassment isn't, and I pointed this out to him, 
and um, one of them went away and makes his secret phone calls and he said, oh, we spoke to the sergeant and, and yes, we are allowed to. So I said, well, let me speak to the sergeant and he said, oh, you can speak to him down the station. Do you know, un- uncooperative. Yeah. Uh, and they were also but... uh, they were also uncooperative with anybody who wanted to know how you were doing and where you were and all the rest of it. So, so, so I hear, yeah, my, especially my daughter. Um, yeah. uh, I say um, they wouldn't even let me out for a cigarette. You know, I've just been uh, in a cell. Um, since since about half oh, past four this morning, hmm. um, uh, and, and until they let me out at the time that was six, seven, seven o'clock, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and, and I say, um, you know, I wasn't allowed any any fresh air or, or nothing, um, not not even a fag. Right? Do they feed you? They offered me, but. <laughs> They could call me Mr. Paranoid. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I know what their team is uh, like. I wasn't having was nothing they was up for giving me, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no worries about that. Listen, yeah, let's enamour you with the, the Irish, uh, listeners here. Um, I'm going to change the subject a little bit and, and, and get you to relax a wee bit. Um, give us your views on the royal family, Chris. I can't stand them, mate. I can't stand them. A bunch of parasites, aren't I? Well, uh, it's, it's not like I say to anybody who, 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 who sort of sticks up for them. You know, she, she's been on the throne over 60 years. What has, what has she ever done for her subjects? Do you know? Um, and people go, oh, she brings lots of money into it. Well, people are still come for the tourism. And, you know, they don't, they, don't, they don't come expecting to see the Queen. <laughs> and then, then they come to see the palaces and, and, and you know, the, the beef eaters and, and, and whatnot. And they don't come expecting to see the Queen. So if, if we had a way with the monarchy, all that would still be there anyway, mate. And it would be a damn sight cheaper than, than what these parasites are costing us because they're costing us millions. And, and, and all they're doing is, well, they, they are evil, mate, aren't they? And why the police haven't been to their door? I mean, can you imagine if I was photographed with every paedophile that's been nicked, um, you, you, you know, and, and, and in the case of Jimmy Savile, uh, Prince Charles faces an absolute delight, you know, to, to see him. Can, can you imagine if, if uh, me or you or anybody else was pictured with all these paedophiles were getting nicked and wasn't so much as asked um, uh, about his activities, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you know, obviously we don't want that homonym and all the rest of it, and we, 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 we know that uh, you shouldn't just say uh, someone's a bad guy because they're with someone else who's a bad guy. That's that's obviously not meant to be done. Well, you can say, but, but you know, if you lay down with dogs, you get a bad name, Sean, don't you? <laughs> you choose your friends, don't you? And you leave the ones that are scum behind. Yeah. And, and there's no way that they couldn't have known, because you can't get close to the royal family if um, you aren't... Um, seriously vetted, you know, um, and, and background checks and whatnot. Now, in, in the case of Jimmy Savile, um, it, it was known about this much, it was known about him in the late 1950s. Um, so there's no way that they couldn't have known. Yeah, I so say, you, you see photos, and, and, and best of times that they, they look as miserable as sin, but, it, it, you know, when, when meeting Jimmy Savile or what, uh, Charles Kennedy contain his delight shall we say <laughs> and and also um i mean the 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 canadian trips that the queen has had and p- children going missing and all the rest of it and the fact that uh, yeah. jimmy savile was possibly you know we can't say he was but possibly procuring children for the royal family themselves it doesn't smack good for their future on their throne does it it doesn't know, but I say people are brainwashed, aren't they, Sean? You know, um, and I say just like these two CID fellas, uh, they, they wasn't interested in what I had to say about it or, or the evidence that I can put forward. Uh, you know, and, and people just switch off and they're, they're blinkered and, you know, they, they wear their stupid little flags at them and, and, and think they're great and think they're doing everything for us. Well, well, they're, they're making millions out of the, uh, depleted uranium. Um, in industry, you know, and 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 our our soldiers um, uh, are starting to um, feel the effects of, of this depleted uranium now, you know, uh, which is going to in 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 the near future is really going to um, skyrocket. But you take your uh, Iraq, you know, the babies that are being born um, by, by the hundreds of thousands, you know, with deformities and whatnot. Yeah. And this depleted uranium, which is used in, in shells, um, it, it never goes away, mate, you know? It never goes away. Yeah, they're, they're, 
making millions. Uh, and, and politicians as well. They've all got their, their little fingers in this pie. It's lucrative pie. And, and that, 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 there's nothing gracious or noble about that whatsoever, mate. No, and, and maybe now that, uh, you know, people are speaking out and they're willing to be brave enough and uh, warrior-like enough to tell the truth and to say, look, I'm a human being. I don't think this should be happening on our planet. Um, you know, they're getting scared now, aren't they? And they're doing things like knocking on people's doors at one in the morning and arresting people just for speaking the truth. No, oh, yeah, and, and when did speaking the truth become a crime, mate? And, and, and if, if, if people, even if they don't buy into what I say, if people think that, that four policemen banging on the door uh, at quarter past one in the morning when you've got um, um, a, a one-year-old asleep in a cot and, and, and searching the premises, uh, being noisy, slamming doors and whatnot, um, having the dogs barking, anyone who thinks that's right, just for um, uh, writing what I do on, on my own website, not not on other people's web. You know, I don't I don't force anybody to read my website. You know, the, uh, I don't advertise my website. Well, pe- people uh, other sites do pick up on it and, and, and use my stuff. Yeah, but I, I don't ask them to. You know, so the thing that, that people can just do that. Um, it, it, and, and, and be allowed to get away with it and, and feel that is normal, then, mate, then they're in for a right old um, rude awakening very soon. They certainly are. And, and, and the thing is, they are conditioned into thinking all this is normal. I mean, I was talking to Vin, who, who runs this radio station, Chris, and, you know, they're, they're walking around with their bulletproof vests around the place, and I'm thinking, well, hang on a second, uh, where's mine? If, if, it's, yeah. if it's that bad out there, surely, you know, and we're paying for yours... Where's mine? Yeah, exactly. And, and I say they, they're, bull, they're bully boys and they don't know the law. I say when, when I pulled them about this section 32, they didn't know. They didn't know. So they, they tried bust here. And I said, no, I'm not having it. This is illegal. It's illegal. So one of them goes away and has to phone up to ask. <laughs> well, surely they should know that before they get here. Of course they should. I mean, you'd think anyone doing any job uh, would know their onions, whatever it may be. I mean, if you're stacking shelves, you know what fucking goes well, where. If, if, if you're going to quote the law at somebody, Sean, um, then you need to know what that law is. And and they didn't. None, none of the four knew. No. You know, and so then, then they came back with a say, oh, section 19 then. But I wasn't arrest, arrested under section 19, and it quite clearly states here what I was arrested under, and, and the authority to search, we were un, under section 32. So... You know, they can section 19 up there. Well, I haven't even read what section 19 is yet, but that's not what I was arrested for, mate. No, uh, or, or, so... or, 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 but that they used, um, to, to search the premises. And I say, I've got that right here in front of me. So, um, no. oh, I'm not going to let it drop, mate, anyway. No, like, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, well, it makes me sound like a dangerous criminal. <laughs> I caught past one in the morning. Yeah, well, t- tell us, tell us about some other little media shithole that that tells you that you're a, a dangerous person. This, uh, what is it, the uh, the Sun newspaper? Well, once again, you no, I can't, I can't talk because that's um, with, with the uh, press complaints commission. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. So I, 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 I'm not allowed to go. Uh, I'm, I'm not allowed to go into details of that because of uh, uh, I said because it, it, it's it, it's going through the process. <laughs> so, but obviously, you know, um, the son did a hat trick job on me. Yeah, Pete yeah, Mac cool. in Pete Mac in the chat room says, uh, "Spivy like Vin always gives links to where he got his info from, so not just hearsay." No, of course it's not. And, and I was saying this to um, the two robots today, you know, um, but they just don't want to know. Short, they don't. People don't want to know. Now, it's fair to say that I have had a lot of attention of late, um, you know, via the sun and, and, and the police and whatnot. And, um, on, on, on things that have been left um, about um, the, the Woolwich hoax, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, they, they want to string it up and whatnot and give me five minutes in a room alone with them and, you know, uh, and, and all this. And, and then as, uh, as soon as uh, my, my readers sort of go on there and, and, and put my website forward and whatnot, you know, and read the truth and that, no one's got any comeback. Mm-hmm. No one has got a comeback on it, Sean, because what, what I put forward uh, about those is indisputable, mate. And, and I say it's all sourced. Yeah, you and, know? And, 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 and we just and, want people to wake, uh, wake up uh, to it. But they don't, do they? 
they don't, and I say, just, just these two, two boys today, they, they just didn't want to know, you know, and they're meant to be, uh, detectives, um, uh, intent on solving crime, but they had, you know, they, they had no interest in, in what I had to say about it, you know, it not at all, so, <laughs> And that, that, that's, the, that's the kind of mentality you're dealing with, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Chris, uh, you know, before this uh, this happened, uh, you're not going to believe this, but I've had it happen twice before that a guest coming on my show was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so I hope it's not us, <laughs> okay? And on, t- <laughs> yeah. and on top of that, they were released in time to come on. Um, you're the first that's actually, you know, ended up coming on a bit late. Yeah, well, I say, I, I'm finding myself, mate, take, take more than them to get me down. Um, it, it's, I'm just sorry that I wasn't here to start the show, but, uh. Oh my god, I think you had a bit of an excuse, didn't you? <laughs> well, yeah, they didn't, they didn't even give me a lift home, Sean. What's that all about? Oh, yeah, I love that. I mean, I remember the harassment. I'd love to do them for harassment. I lived in England, Chris, and I went through the Thatcher years, okay? And yeah. um, I was quite involved with a lot of things, which is why I'm now a radio presenter in Ireland. Um, and I remember being, you know, picked up and then driven a, load, a long distance and then picked up by another van and then driven another long distance, dumped off in the middle of nowhere and uh, told it never happened. So yeah, I was... Uh, I was like, at one stage, I wasn't sure whether I was going to Manchester today or not, you know? Yeah. So... Um... They're just arseholes, mate. They are proper arseholes. I say that it, it, it's not about um, solving crime or, or um, seeing justice done. It, it, it's it's about the police state, you know, and and the the fear factor. But yeah. I'm not scared of them, mate. They don't scare me. They didn't scare me last night. They didn't scare me today. And and I'm not scared of them now. Mate. They can go and fuck themselves. Yeah, absolutely, and well said. Um, I, I, I just really think that it's um, an impossible situation for people to stand up and try and tell the truth when so many, sadly, are, are reading the Sun newspaper and, and listening to the bullshit the British broadcast. Yeah, and I don't, they don't even try to get um, the other side, Sean. Do you know? So how, how can you form an opinion if you've only got one side of it? You know? No, uh, absolutely. I mean, my, my, to, to, to read. Um, all, all the information I've put out on there will, will, will take, you know, hours and a bit of concentration. Yeah. And, and, and people just haven't got that, have they? You know, uh, they, they want to be told, and, and once they're told something by the mainstream media, then that becomes fact, and, and it, it doesn't matter what anybody else says, you know? And I say, like, like I say, when, when uh, they've been commenting on, on these stories that appear in the paper and whatnot, uh, all outrages and whatnot, uh, as soon as someone comes in with a kind of argument um, and, and a bit of logic, they, they just go quiet. They just go quiet, you know. And even those who, who attack me, you know, it's all, I oh, he's a baldy bastard, you know, a yobbo, right wing, left wing, centre wing. Um, <laughs> do you know, that there, there, there's no... Um, um, well, they've got no intelligence, I'm, I'm, I'm counter what I say, you know, it's just a, a, an attack on my person. Yes, yes. I mean, they couldn't possibly have an argument. I mean, you'd knock them in for six out of the park, wouldn't you? Well, I, I don't have time to get on there enough, but uh, I have some very clued up people who do. Good, um, good. My, you know, and, and I say, people, people don't even try. They don't even try to um, uh, counter the argument. You know, they, they, normally they just shut up. Uh, and and that, that, that's what people are these days, isn't it? They're sheep. <laughs> uh, sheep without a backbone, mate. Well, I tell you, I mean, uh, I, I'm going to ask you this question, even though I probably know the answer to it. Uh, is Chris Spivy going to tone it down a little bit now? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I say, mate, I'm, I'm going to war. Uh, I, I'm absolutely outraged at the police's behaviour anyway. Uh, if I wasn't outraged enough before. Um, and <laughs> the only way they shut me up, mate, is by putting me six foot under. Yeah, and uh, I don't think that's going to happen sometime soon, do you? <laughs> no. No, I say they, they, they hold no fear for me, Sean. Um, uh, you know, I've got no desire to um, uh, um, go to prison or, or, or whatever, but you know, they don't try to stitch me up or something or whatever. But um, they won't shut me up, mate. Not a chance. They've made, they've made lots and lots of mistakes. That's what they've done. I mean... They, they have indeed. And I, I tell you what, Sean... Um, 
people aren't falling for it um, as easily as what they did, you know, and a lot of people are, are coming round. Not just my stuff, to uh, y- you know, the, this realization that, that they're taking the piss out of them, yeah. you know, um, and, 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 and the government aren't doing anything um, for the people. They're, they're just self-serving nonsense, mate. Yeah, they are. Look, um, obviously I was going to want to be talking about the Woolwich attacks. I was, uh, the attack. I was wanting to talk about the paedophile ring in Westminster. Um, can we name names? Can we, can we go for it? In, 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 in what? In, in, in Westminster? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the names are coming out. And I say, like, now Thatcher's dead. Uh, as, uh, Yay! Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. I think I actually knew uh, wrote about it. Um, you, you know, saying it'll all come out now uh, about it. it is all coming out. Yeah, yeah. You had that, that Gideon Bean, George Osborne, crying his eyes out like some twat uh, at a funeral, you know. And and, and David Cameron, David Cameron, the long, uh, long time supporter of Thatcher. Well, mm. if you're telling me that David Cameron didn't know what was going on, then. Um, you're deluding yourself, mate. They, they, they all, they all know, don't they? I mean, it's, it's very. Of they do, and that's what they, they are either. If, if, if they're not at it, then they are uh, nonce protectors. Absolutely, you know? they're condoning the behaviour. It's a bit like the Catholic Church, really, and the amount of bishops that hid um, their their paedophile priests in various places and actually sent them out to other dioceses to bugger other little children. Yeah, and and th- th- this is the kind of people that um, are, are making the laws and, and, and um, making people's lives misery, uh, you know. And um, I, I hear people say, well, well, yeah, they're a big club, but they all are, and they, <laughs> <laughs> they like, shut up, you crap. You know, they, if, if if you're in in a position of of power like uh, the government. Then you need to be whiter than white, mate. You, you, you need to be open and 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 uh, transparent in all you do, and You're then not every, everything is um, um, cloak and dagger. You know. You're um, absolutely they, right. Even Chris. their expenses, they, you know, they, they, they're trying to get them so they don't have to declare, so they have a license to steal. Yes. Do you know, absolutely outrageous, mate. Absolutely. And anyone who thinks that is is okay because they're all there. <laughs> you know want, want a good kick up the arse they really do and the, the thing is these people aren't in a position of power they're supposed to be in a position of trust yeah exactly uh, and, and they're meant to be there to serve us yeah. not, not the other way around but, uh, um, as the police somewhere, are... some, somewhere along the line thing, things have all gone off about fights haven't they um, yeah. uh, and I say that they're, they are a law unto themselves and, and they do what they want and, and uh, penalise who they, they want and, and if people can't see the, the, if we're not already, we are very, very fast becoming a police state, um, and, and and they need to wake up very, very quickly, you know, because um, uh, just can't. I say when 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 you're getting the door locked at uh, uh, half past quarter past one in the morning for uh, an harassment charge, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, that's the guest up, out, mate. Yeah, absolutely. They're just doing their job and. Uh... Mm. You know, and do you know what they said that they, they did say that they're just doing their job they want to get no fucking job then mate yeah absolutely that's their line and they're all corporates that's what they are they're not they're not doing anything but supporting corporate um well they're, they're say corporate enforcement agents aren't they they're not uh, um, they're, they're not they're protect and serve they yeah. they got no interest in protecting so you know and then you ask them questions and they just go all oh, big deal when you get down the station or whatnot you know because they don't know and I say as far as I'm aware mate to to quote the law uh, at someone when you don't know what that law is is against the law <laughs> well they sh- certainly shouldn't be in those positions to enforce <laughs> anything if they don't know what they are well, doing. It's absolutely disgusting, mate. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, and, uh, I say, you know, I, I wasn't hiding from them. They didn't need to come around at that time. And, and um, this was actually touched upon. And they said, oh, well, we work 24 hours a day, like, you know, so um, well, what's that got to do with anything? Do you know? Um, I say, you know, I don't work 24 hours a day. You know, come back at a decent time when, when I mean, I'm with a block of flats here. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it was and, affecting and other people. Slamming the door in and out, in and out, slamming the door. Yeah, yeah. They've got no respect. Just rude, mate. Just rude, uh, 
arrogant and, and, and bully boys. Yeah. And that's what they were, bully, bully boys, mate, but... And it's, get, it's getting huh? it's getting to the stage now, Chris, where um, unfortunately the good ones are either left chucked away or given an office but job. But they they've all gone, and, and like you just said, Sean, they're not they're not police officers anymore. They're they're uh, corporate enforcement uh, agents, you know, just, just there to um, do what they're told. Absolutely, without question. Chris, you do you want to have a, do you want to take a little break and and maybe get yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea or something and I'll pop, pop a tune on. Yes, mate. Yeah. Yes, all right. Mate. We'll do that, and I thought, you know, pretty appropriate for what we were talking about. How about a bit of sex, sex pistols and God Save the Queen, yeah? Good, 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 mate. Let's go for it. And welcome back to Out of the Bag. This is Sean Maguire live on People's Internet Radio. That's www.peoplesinternetradio.com, where we are seeking solutions. And uh, it's absolutely fantastic news that uh, even though he was arrested this morning... Of stupid hours of the morning, we have Chris Bivy with us. Chris, are you still with me? I could have done with the uh, extended version of that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just managed to get a cup of tea time. Oh, sorry, man, sorry. I could put another one, a bit of anarchy. No, 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 you're all right. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> I had your Russian. That's not good, is it? <laughs> not, not after the day I've had, mate. No, no, no. My apologies, my apologies. So, so look, Chris, you were going to come on the show anyway. Let, let, let's pretend <laughs> that it didn't mm-hmm. yeah yeah that it didn't happen what would have been the main thing you wanted to get across to my listeners to anyone out there listening to chris spivy so uh, i'm not sure i understood the question so, so again, Sean? okay what would have been the main thing that you wanted to get across i mean did you just want to had, put... had, had, had i not been invested yeah well obviously this, this woolwich hoax um and, and it is a hoax and i can talk about the hoax brilliant uh, yeah, that's like you just certain things that I can't talk about. Um, but the hoax itself, I can talk about the hoax. There's nothing so I can't talk about the hoax. And it was a hoax. And um, on on the back of that hoax, um, we we you, you, you've got anti um, anti Muslim sentiment at an all time low. Yeah, I mean it was uh, to build racism and hatred, wasn't it really? It, it, it was uh, in the main. It was also about um, get the war. Um, it, it, you know, it get involved in Syria and whatnot, and on on the strength of it, um, <coughs> the intelligence services had their budget increased by uh, three point five billion. On the strength of the uh, Woolwich attack. On the strength of the Woolwich attack, mate. On mentioned um, specifically, the Woolwich attack was specifically mentioned. Uh, for the reason for increasing the budget, wow. where uh, no no other department's got anywhere near that. No, okay. Well, look, I tell you what, we do have a lot of listeners from around the world, Chris, and uh, it'd be really good if maybe you can explain what happened. What is the Woolwich attack? Uh, what was the mainstream media's spin? Sorry, take on it, and um, also what you think the hoax and the truth was. Well, I mean. Uh, uh, I think he's pretty well known around the world anyway, uh, judging by um, my readers and whatnot. Sure. But, um, you know, basically a soldier um, was beheaded, although he wasn't beheaded, but that, that's um, what everyone has, has in their minds. And if you look at people who comment on, on articles, they're still under the impression that he was beheaded, you know. Um, and and uh, the, these two extremist uh, Muslims, terrorists, um, did the do, did the deed, but um, they wasn't charged uh, under el- any terrorist uh, offences whatsoever. You know, they was charged with, with just straight murder, if you can have a straight murder. <laughs> um, you know, nothing to do with terrorism. But straight after the verdict, after the court case, um, you, you had Cinder Dix, the assistant uh, metropolitan police commissioner, Saying, you know, talking about terrorists and whatnot, yet there hadn't been tried for any terrorist um, crimes, you know. So to 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 sort of rope terrorism into it when when they're not charged with any terrorist crimes is a crime itself, or it ought to be, um, you know. But then it, it, so obviously staged, uh, like I tried to tell um, Batman and Robin today yeah. um, uh, about the bus. You know, you, you just got to take the bus. Okay. Um, the, the big bed and bus that was blocking the road alone because um, it, it stopped 
at what wasn't a bus stop and what isn't a bus stop and what will never be a bus stop. Yeah. Now it's a busy, that, it's a busy place, isn't it? This, this a busy, busy, busy junction. Yeah, mm. uh, artillery place and, and Joe Wilson Street. Um, a very, very busy junction, but it wasn't um, uh, on on the twenty second of May two thousand and thirteen. But I felt it's bus stopped and let a load of people off. Now that, that's. Uh, an instant dismissal for the bus driver mm. uh, because uh, that bus driver has a care of duty to his passengers. Yeah. And you know, no, no, straight away. The same, not, not being a bus stop. But then you have the uh, the bus reversing, inexplicably reversing, just before the armed police turn up. Well, why did he reverse? Why didn't he go forward? You know? But uh, how did he know to reverse? Yes. But he reversed nevertheless, and, and the armed police came in and. and Fired eight shots, and I think four of them hit and four of them missed. Um, if you just compare that to the Mark Duggan shooting, um, he, he was shot twice, and, and um, two bullets were used. Um, uh, I say, but uh, since 1995, according to one uh, report I saw, um, there, there was 95 people shot from 1995. To two, um, 22nd 2013, and 95 um, people had died. Yeah, on, on May uh, 22nd 2013, they both survived, you know. Mm. Uh, you show me another incident where <laughs> um, supposedly armed, although he wasn't armed, an armed maniac is coming at armed police and doesn't end up dead. Yeah. You know, it's it, it just, just too ridiculous for words. I mean, you have the, um, Chris Ender Dick said that they acted professionally and saved lives that day. Well, if you look at my evidence, my photo evidence, you will see that uh, nothing could be further from the truth. So how, how they managed to uh, not shoot, um, I don't know whether he's part of the act or, or just a bystander or what, I'll never know. But he was a very, very lucky man. They hit an uh, electric junction box instead. Yeah. But, um, well, you got the three of them, um, s- sort of aiming their guns at this, uh, Michael Adepalajo. Now, if you look at the, um, the actual footage, I, I am 99.9% certain that the passenger on, on copper didn't come out of the BMW. He, he was already on the ground because, uh, the doors, the, the, the driver's door and the, um, the, the copper behind him in the back passenger seat they're still getting out well the passenger the front seat passenger is um out and the door closed and he, he's obviously coming from a different angle yeah but anyway they all um they 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 all concentrate on michael adabalajo yes who ends up in the middle he takes a theatrical dive ends up in the middle of of the carriageway and then the footage goes away and in a one second period, despite being shot, he moves from halfway across the carriageway to the pavement. This was never explained. That was magic. But the three of them have, 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 have their guns trained on him, and all the while you have Michael Adeboale walking down the uh, pavement with a gun pointed at him. Now, had, had that gun um, been working or loaded even, they would have been dead. Uh, all three of them would have been dead. You know, without a doubt, before they picked up on him, and the same, then they shot him. They shot him supposedly in the guts, despite him having a bulletproof vest on, police issue bulletproof vest. Yeah. And um, he he went down, and he still allegedly aimed the gun at him. You can't see with the CCTV; it's too blurry and whatnot. But um, one of these coppers, instead of shooting him dead, uh, d- decides to shoot the gun out of his hand, blows his thumb off. Well, I've proved that not to be the case because, um, as I say, I've got pictures of him with his thumb there. In fact, one of the cop- coppers grabs hold of that hand that the thumb was supposed to be blown off and drags him onto the grass of urge. Well, quite why he did that, I don't know. But, mm. um, uh, sorry, they, you know, so I've got photos to prove that his thumb wasn't blown off despite what we are told. And there's no mark on the gun. If you shoot a gun, um, you, you know, there's going to be some mark. Uh, on it, but there's there's no bullet mark, and and the gun would have gone flying out of his hand, but instead it, it, it fell about two foot forward, do you know? Yeah. Then you got the the, the car itself. Now, if, I would I would advise anyone to, who who still believes the official story to go and find themselves a Tigra, and stand in front of a Tigra, and yeah. they're tiny. Sure, it is a it is a little car, yeah. 
they, 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 I mean, the bonnet can't be longer than four and a half, five foot. Um, and it, it's got an awful slope on it. Now, Dr. Simon Poole, the pathologist, he said that the impact broke his back in five places, broke five vertebrae in his back. Okay. Well, so sure, a Tigra wouldn't, isn't high enough to hit your back. Uh, someone, uh, Rigby's high, um, five, eight, five, nine, um, it, it, it would come sort of knee, uh, lower thigh height. Yeah, do your legs. And it would, have, it would have smashed his leg to pieces, if not both his legs, you know. Yeah. But he had no broken legs. He had five, uh, five fractured vertebrae in his back. Now, there's, you, people say, oh, well, it might be when he hit the windscreen or whatever, but that's not, Dr. Simon Paul is quite, quite clear that it was the impact that caused these five vertebrae, fractured vertebrae which, unless Rigby was crouching down, would be quite, quite impossible. Yeah. Do you know? So, um, uh, uh, I say, but then, then you're supposed to believe that it, this little Tigra uh, bounced up the curb, with Rigby still on the bonnet, um, made an impossible turn, and at 30, 30 to 40 mile an hour, smashed into a signpost that didn't move an inch. Yeah, the signpost wasn't and- even bent, was it? But wasn't, but didn't move an inch <laughs> and launched, uh, Rigby off the bonnet two foot. <laughs> two foot. Well, if it had rolled off the bonnet, if it hadn't hit nothing, the car would stop and he rolled off the bonnet, he'd been two foot away. Yeah, he'd you be know? Gone, yeah. So you, you just got to look at that to know that it's absolute, absolute nonsense. And I say, then, then you've got, um, the buff, buff reversing to let, let the, uh, armed police in. Now, it then reversed again uh, a little while after that, and it took me a long, long while to figure out why this was, Sean. Okay. <laughs> but what it is, is, is the bus reversed to um, just before a crossing, a Pelican crossing, which has railings either side of the crossing, you know, to stop people sort of um, cheating, if you like. Yeah, so, they, they, so they use the crossing itself, yeah. Exactly. And where, where he first stopped, um, there was railings in front of the doors. Mm. Now, he, he needed to be in a position where uh, one of the security uh, service chaps who was playing a bystander could usher the um, so-called bystanders who, who were all in on the plot onto the bus. Yeah. So the bus driver then had to reverse about another six foot so that his doors pulled level with the opening at the Pelican Crossing. And this was done under the cover when the... Uh, the paramedics and whatnot arrived. Um, now, when the paramedics arrived, the armed police was already treating two. Two of them were treating Adebowale, and one of them was treating um, Adebolajo. Not one of them had gone to see whether Big was okay or not. You know, mm-hmm. and, and they admit themselves that they didn't know what they was um, looking at facing when they got there. Do you know? Yeah. But. They, 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 instead of, you know, they're totally ignoring, uh, Rigby on the ground, they, they began treating these two, uh, terrorists who weren't terrorists. And when the paramedics turned up, uh, which was the bus queue to reverse again, the paramedics didn't take over. They, they just stood talking to these coppers who continued treating my daughter coming out, uh, just continued. Um, uh, uh, treating treat these two terrorists while these paramedics were, you know, standing around doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that, that wouldn't happen. But in the meantime, this, um, this undercover copper uh, who'd been called in by someone called, a woman called Tina Nimmo. Mm-hmm. Now, Tina Nimmo was supposedly a bystander, um, who said she'd never seen a gun. Incidentally, when the shooting was going off, she was dropping knives, um, on the side, and, and I, I traced this in photographs to say her, where, where she's standing and where knives appear, yeah, make an exact, the exact same half circle. Because okay. what she did, she, she sort of went in a half circle and then ran up the road and then came back down the road and called everybody forward. Yeah. Um, but, but she's just meant to be a lone lady. Nevertheless, had she been, had this been a real situation, the armed police would not have just let her walk around, you know, six foot away from the shooting. They didn't know whether she was part of it or not. They would have told her to get down on the ground. And if she didn't, they would have shot her. Absolutely. Quite, yeah. quite simple. You know, they, they, they wouldn't, you don't fuck about it. I say she could have been anybody. They didn't know. Um, yet yeah, they, they, she's just been allowed to walk around and she even leans over and shouts and speaks to them and they do nothing. Hmm. 
I say she then goes up the road, comes back, and she calls. Um, that, that, that's when she calls everybody forward, and um, uh, the, these two undercover coppers um, dressed in grey hoodies and, and jeans they, they they come forward with the crowd. And one of them goes to uh, the body, and the other one goes to the top of the road, gets the so you know the people who are meant to be um, uh, just ordinary bystanders but aren't, and he ushers them all down onto this bus. Hmm. And then we're told the bus went away on its journey, which would just never, ever, ever happen. You know, it totally goes against all, all crime procedures. Of course. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, once he's got them on the bus, uh, a uniformed couple walks over to the bus and, and they exchange words, um, you know, for 30 seconds or whatever. And then this grey hoodie fella, he leaves the, the uniformed copper and he walks over to where Ada Bellagio is being treated by um, this gun cop and, and the two paramedics are, are watching, still watching. And he just picks up the bag, the paramedic's bag, uh, without saying, you know, no, no one turns and says hi or, or who are you or whatever. Yeah. You know, he just, he just picks it up, um, like, like it's the most natural thing in the world, rummages around in it. Uh, I think he gets a, a pair of gloves out, so it's a bit hard to make out. But once he's got whatever he wants, he then starts to walk up the pavement, but he almost immediately bends down and picks something up, clutches it to his belly. So there you have interfering with a crime scene for a start, carries seven years of prison. Um, well, well, it was, I'm pretty sure it, it was a plastic glove that he flew that, threw down, uh, earlier when, he, when Tina and him are calling forward. Uh, people are understanding what, well, yeah, you know, I forget that. Not everybody knows his story, do you know? And I, I know by heart. But when, when, when Tina Nimmo first called him forward, uh, as they walked past the, the, the two coppers treating Ada Boale, um, they, they said something to him and the, the female copper, she'd actually dropped her taser and it was still on pavement. And whether this, this great hoodie fella threw this glove down to try and cover it or, or what and, and failed, uh, miserably in doing so I don't know but he, he picks it up and clutches it to his belly uh, all furtive like and walks away so, so, so you've got interfering with the crime scene then. so that alone Sean you know um, shows that it, it was a staged event yeah you know? quite obviously it, it, really without a doubt and I say you know I don't, I don't, don't say take my word for it it is all there just go to my website and and have a look, they, they just find a section that, that says Woolwich, uh, and, and all the articles are there, and I say it, it's detailed in pictures, what I've just explained to you, you know, um, it's indisputable, Sean, you know, it, it's not open for debate, it is indisputable. So, um, I mean, I'm even asking, getting questions in the, in the chat room, like, you know, <laughs> who played the part of Rigby? Was it an actor, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, because anything could have happened there. Robert Sargent. I don't, I'm, nothing's on my bow says I want to talk about Robert Sargent. Okay. Robert Sargent did, uh, he played one of them, for definite. Right. That, uh, once again, the, um, the evidence is on my website, on, on, on the Rigby articles. I'm also being I'm also being asked by 4K Carrots, great name 4K. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ask Bivy why were well, they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what type of carrots? Uh, gold probably. Why were the two mix wearing bulletproof vests? <coughs> well, uh, Adel Boale definitely was. I'm not sure that uh, Adel Bellagio was. Um, although he, he, he was done. I mean, everyone's in, in shirt sleeves. You know, it's quite a warm day. Yeah. But these two Michaels are um, dressed in big coats and whatnot, you know. And especially in the case of Adwale, who was supposedly shot in the guts, not a not not a, a, a drop of blood is on his coat, uh, despite um, allegedly attempted to behead this soldier. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, where where the police, you see the police cutting away um, uh, his clothing because he's supposed to have been shot in the guts. And, um, and he's, he's quite clearly got a bullet professor. I was saying, you know, the photo evidence is there on my, uh, my website. Yeah. Quite, quite clearly got a, a bulletproof. Although, I mean, you could make him, well, he could have got a bulletproof from, uh, best from, from anywhere and just been wearing it. But why? Do you think, I mean, for... if, if, if they were going to martyr themselves, which was obviously, um, uh, the script writer's intention, so otherwise they would have, um, you, you know, left after doing the dirt sort of thing. Yeah. So, it's obviously going to be, you know, so why wear bulletproof vests? But <laughs> e- e- even so, then, you know, he's supposed to be shot 
in, in, in the guts with um, uh, a, a soft, what, what are they called? The, 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 not dumb, dumb, dumb bullets, you know, the ones that spread out as they hit the body so yeah. they don't go by through it, but they make an awful mess. Right. Well, look, 4K, a, ca- 4K carrots are saying, I mean, you don't find them stab vests on eBay, do you? Just saying. Well, no, you don't, you know, but you, as, as you know, Sean, you can get anything if you know the right people. True, uh, true. But, but that, that's neither here nor there. I mean, he, he, he had a bulletproof vest on, which even if, if you take, or take it at his worst, you know, why would he wear it if, if they were intent on martyring themselves anyway? You know? Um, but even so, there's, there's no blood on it. He'd also been shot in the leg, and, and, and the, a lot of newspaper reports said that he, he was um, bleeding profusely. Mm-hmm. You know, yet there's not a drop of blood on the pavement. Yeah, so, as I say, they shot his thumb off. Yeah, the, the arm copper drags him by that, that hand, the right hand, onto the grass verge. I'm not sure what the, the point of dragging him onto the grass verge was, but he did. And um, uh, bye bye that hand. And then I've got photos, um, which, which I've taken from um, videos, and you wouldn't normally see them. I mean, you could video move so quick off your frame by frame, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see it, but because I went, I've gone through all these videos frame by frame. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, there's about three or four pictures of uh, Adebelajo clearly with his thumb still intact <sighs> on there. So, uh, you, you know, it, it just lie after lie after lie. Absolutely, and they're proving it. They're just proving they're liars. And Pete Mack in the in the in the chat room, um, he he was absolutely thrilled when he heard you were coming on. This is you know well before your arrest, Chris. And uh-huh. um, you know, obviously, he was looking forward to the show, and he's, he he must be chuffed to bits that you're you're here, you know, and that you're released, just as all all of us are. Um, he's saying uh, your court case. Uh, it's saying he's saying Chris won't go to court due to his info might might be getting out there. Well, I don't. I haven't been charged with anything, mate. Um, I, I, I look on the bail, actually, and then, 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 there's no charge. Uh, <laughs> Do you know? But you're, uh, but they're, they're, you're bailed till what? September the fifth. September said? the fifth. Uh, yeah, September the fifth. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, the, so what the, do they intend the, to do then? Sorry. What do they intend to do then? It doesn't say. It's very obscure, actually. Um, condition bail to police station grant. You know, it doesn't say what the one I'm charged with, or or it doesn't name any offence at all. Um, just, just what I can't do. Well, I tell you but, what, I tell you what, Chris. Um, y- your family wants you with them. I can hear them in the background, and we're just all thrilled that not that you just come on our show, you know. And I'm very honoured to have you here, Chris. But that you're released, that you're safe, that you're home, and you know, uh, Stacey and 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 all need good hugs, and you probably need a few as well. She, she was blown away by the um, the support as well, Sean. You know, yeah. uh, I say which, which is. Been absolutely fantastic and must, must send a shiver, um, down those who are watching. Yeah. And their, their spine to, to see the support and, and what people were wanting to do today while I was arrested. You know, there was people, um, you know, wanting to come and camp outside the police station, mate, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, uh, I say, it, it, it bowled me over the, uh, the, the, the strength of that support. Um, I, I knew I had a lot, but I didn't know it was that much. Um, and, and I say that, that, that helps Stacey a lot as well. Um, you know, people willing to, um, uh, go out of the way to help, you know? Yeah, no, it's, so, am- it's amazing. You've got support and you've got plenty of support and it just, it, it makes us feel a bit better because we're out there telling the truth and getting people on talking their truths on, on a regular basis where, you know, my wife's saying, you know, don't be doing it. You know, you're going to get yourself arrested. Well, that's it. well, this is what my daughter says to me, but if we don't, Sean, who is? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to get out there. So, no, it, 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 you call, you always call between the rock and the hard place. And always, I do feel a bit sorry for her, you know, because she's frightened and whatnot, not just, uh, of the police coming in you know, about sort of what's going to happen to me or whatnot, and and but like if you don't do it, who is going to do it, Sean? Do you know? Yeah. And, and if no one does nothing, then we might as well all just lay down and die now. Absolutely. We're just asking for the fascist regime and the Nazism to, to completely take over. Which sadly, England's getting more like a police state every day. I left it because it was a police state back in the Thatcher years, mate. Mm-hmm. It is, and and I say, any anyone, whether you agree with what I write or, or not, <laughs> a, a, anyone who thinks, 
<laughs> anyone who thinks um, that that is acceptable uh, when, when you have a one-year-old child oh, okay. for a minor charge of, of harassment, anyone who thinks that accept, is that acceptable, um, you, do you know, want, wants to give themselves a serious, serious talking to. Yeah. And that's whether they agree with what I write or not, mate. For yeah, anybody, because it's it's a minor, minor charge. Not that I know I've been charged with that. I don't say exactly what I'm charged with. But... Um, um, it's totally, totally unacceptable, total, uh, total Gestapo uh, tactics, you know. It certainly is. And listen, Chris, go back to your family. I love you loads, and that's loads and loads of love in the chat room for you. Well done, Spivy. Love to you and all your family. Stay safe from Caledonia. There's, there's been loads of messages all the way through the chat. I couldn't even keep up with them, mate. Thank you, Sean. Okay. And, uh, we'll, we'll do it again sometime, yeah? Absolutely. And under better circumstances, one hopes. Eh? <laughs> Let's hope. Do you know? All right, Sean, thank you. All right, you, mate. It's time, it's time for an uprising.